Hello, good morning everybody. It's uh, 10 o'clock and it's time for Sprint the Talk. Um, it's episode 46 today. Um, we're looking at uh, approval bodies and schemes. Uh, and this is part two. Um, so yeah, part one was a few weeks ago. I forget uh, which number that was, but uh, yeah, 41 or 42. Uh, we looked at approval bodies and schemes part one. Um, so this is going to be a continuation uh, from there, uh, which leads me on to, to this slide here before we start. So just wanted to say that what this, this presentation sort of doesn't include. Um, so for example, I'm not going to be talking about the LPCB uh, in this um, presentation because I covered that in, in part one. Um, so yeah, the LPCB is the, the most common uh, approval body uh, and uh, installer scheme that we find in the UK, and um, I looked at that in uh, in session one. Um, also, this is today to do with approval bodies and schemes. So uh, the NFPA uh, does not feature in this presentation either. So the, um, the National Fire Protection Association, um, based in America, um, producing lots of, um, of code standards for uh, fire. Um, electrical and, and other aspects of, of safety. Um, so yeah, really good um, non-profit organisation um, host their um, standards. Uh, for, they're all free to view uh, online. Um, so yeah, great, but they're not going to be included in this presentation because I'm looking at approval bodies and schemes and the NFPA do not um, have a, uh, an approval um, so they don't, they don't approve products and they don't approve um, companies and, and things like that. They just write the code standards, so, so they're not in here. Um, also, just wanted to say that um, as per usual, you know, my, my information that I'm giving you is, is accurate as, as I can make it, um, but you know, I, I may get some things wrong. So I just um, encourage you to uh, yeah, let me know if there's, um, if there's errors uh, in what I'm saying, and I can maybe correct them in the next presentation. Uh, but also, yeah, just check out the, the websites and, and the information yourself. So I'll be giving you a list of um, other approval bodies uh, and schemes uh, and their website links. Uh, so yeah, you can go there yourself and you can find out exactly uh, what they're offering and what they're not offering. Okay, but let's, let's make a start. So I'm gonna start here with uh, Factory Mutual or FM. Um, so FM were around, you know, right back in, at the start of um, sprinkler inventions. Um, so, so the story goes. Um, you know, I covered this in, in, in one again, one of the very early book the talks. So I talked about the history uh, about a man who who owned uh, a cotton mill, um, and he he was concerned about fire. So he invented uh, this idea of, of sprinklers. You know, one of the, the kind of first pioneers uh, went to uh, his insurance company and said, "Well, I've got this amazing." Um, fire protection device now. Uh, surely you'll give me a, a discount on my insurance premiums. As I say, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this story. I don't know uh, kind of how true it is, but um, so the story goes. The insurance company said, "No, we're not giving you any discount." Uh, so you know, he, he was one of those kind of pioneers that uh, that set up uh, their own um, insurance group. So he got together with with other um, sort of business owners in the area. You know, mostly kind of farmers, I think. Um, and they, they kind of clubbed together and they set up their own insurance group and they called it Factory Mutual. Um, so yeah, so right back in the day, um, they are they, they basically uh, an, in, an insurance group. Um, so they have their, their own um, standards and their own approvals, but it is very much based around property protection rather than life safety. Um, so yeah, and they they kind of specialise um, in um, in specialised specialist risks. Um, so things like um, say high hazard environments, um, factories, uh, but also things like uh, power stations, for example, uh, may well be um, using FM as the insurer, but also using FM as the kind of the go-to uh, for standards and approvals. Uh, so they're based in America, uh, Rhode Island, USA. Um, I, I've not been to their, their bases. Uh, I've not been uh, over there to, to see them. Um, but um, 
a lot of our products at Project Fire are FM approved. So I have, have had dealings with them uh, in terms of sending them uh, samples of products uh, over to be uh, tested and evaluated, uh, and then I get a, a test report back um, that, that either tell me that the, the product is passed, which obviously is, uh, is the, the best, uh, otherwise I get a report to say, you know, it's failed on this particular test, and then we can go away and we can uh, redesign it, uh, we can improve it, and then we can send it back um, to be re-evaluated and then so hopefully signed off. Um, so, yeah, you, you probably recognise this this logo, this kind of, um, is it a rhombus, rhombus um, style diamond uh, with FM approved, and that is, say, a common sight to see on um, fire protection equipment, uh, sprinkler heads, uh, for example. So, at say Factory Mutual, they do have, um, they don't call them uh, code standards or, or, or standards, uh, but they call them data sheets. So, we have uh, property loss prevention data sheets, um, which is basically their, their, their form of, of guidance. So, I've got some examples there uh, FMD uh, S0200. Here's the installation guideline for automatic sprinklers. So, so they, they've got their, their own way of, of providing this kind of uh, bulletins or documents or, or codes, um, we'd say just guidance in terms of how they would do it from a factory mutual point of view. Now, they also have approval standards. So, for example, uh, FM 1043 um, is what you would see stamped on the top of a flow switch, uh, approval standard for water flow detector, uh, te detector testers. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what zone check is, is approved under. Um, sorry, it's, yeah, 1042 is the, the flow switch, isn't it? Approval standard for vein type water flow alarm indicators. So, yeah, they've got their approval standards. So, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to invent a, a new um, flow switch, for example, then you could get that manufactured uh, wherever you like, um, and then you would um, go to FM and say, I'd, I'd like this, this approved, please. Um, and they would send you a copy of 1042. You could then do your own uh, in-house testing, if you like, to kind of see whether you kind of think it's got a good chance of, of passing their tests. Um, and then you would send it off. Um, obviously, you, you pay the fee. Um, FM would then carry out uh, the testing on that product. And then so hopefully you would then get a certificate and a piece of paper which says, yep, yeah, that is now an approved product. Um, but as part of that approval, approval process, you would submit um, drawings um, and you would submit a kind of a, a, a manufacturing method, if you like. Um, and then from there, you wouldn't be allowed to change it. And, and that's the same for, for all approval bodies, is that once you have kind of uh, got a, a product approved, it is only approved exactly like it is on the day of the test. Um, so you can't make any changes to that product. You can't change components, change materials, um, change um, I don't know, d d dimensions, for example. You can't do any of that without affecting the approval. So you would have to go back to FM and say, right, I've, I've made this change. Um, what, what do you think? Um, now, that there's a chance that um, the approval body would say, yeah, I'm happy, that's not going to make any difference to the, um, to the approval, um, so yeah, no fee, um, and crack on. But it's much more likely that the approval body will say, you know, no, we, we need to do some re-evaluation there, and again, there would be a bill to pay for them to do some retesting, and then the product can get re-approved. So you don't want to make changes to your product um, unless you kind of have to, or unless there's you know a good financial reason to do so, because you will then have to have the product uh, sort of re-evaluated and retested. Um, and uh, as I explained um, in in part one, in terms of um, how that is um, sort of maintained, so FM will then carry out audits uh, on your product uh, and um, on your manufacturing facilities uh, to make sure that product is continuing to be made in the way that it was originally approved to be so. 
Uh, moving on, uh, UL, Underwriters uh, Laboratories. So this is another one that is based in America and uh, Illinois this time. Um, UL are mainly known for their electrical stuff. So they, they do a lot more um, in terms of uh, electrical, uh, much more in terms of life safety um, than, than FM. Um, but yeah, both uh, approve um, sprinkler heads. And, and what I need to say is that all of these companies that I'm mentioning, you know, they do a lot more than fire sprinklers. You know, fire sprinklers is only a small part uh, of what the, the company do. And, you know, these, these companies are into uh, safety um, in, in a much broader sense um, than just automatic fire sprinklers. So yeah, I do need to kind of point that out. Um, so what, again, UL, very similar to, to FM in terms of, you know, they've got, uh, they've got standards. They don't have installation standards that, that I'm aware of, um, but they do have um, product standards. So, for example, UL864, um, standard for control units and accessories for fire alarm systems. That, that's quite, again, quite a common one to see um, fire alarm uh, panels to be UL approved, and that will be UL approved against uh, the standard UL864. So, um, it, it, in a way, um, it, it's, it's quite a nice, easy job uh, for UL. Um, that they, they write the standard 864, and then any product that comes to them that fits into that category, then they would then test it against that, that criteria. So, it's a kind of a, a tick box exercise. Um, you, know, you, you do this test, this test, this test. Does it do this? Does it do this? Does it do this? Tick, 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 and then it will be um, approved and signed off. Um, I guess the, the problem comes when you have a product which doesn't fit uh, into um, a nice sort of simple category. Then they would either have to create a, a new standard um, or um, they would kind of take relevant bits from, from relevant standards and kind of put it together um, and say, right, well, we, we can approve it under this, um, this particular um, sort of document, say, which is a bit of this and a bit of this and a bit of this. Um, so yeah, all, the, all their standards there um, are available to, to, to view. Um, so yeah, those are a few examples there. Uh, in terms of the, the, the logo, so you can see on that previous slide there, I showed you the, the UL uh, in a circle. So that, that's more of, of an advertising um, symbol. Um, so you might see that on, on websites, you might see that on, on kind of packaging, etc. Uh, but yeah, UL are, are very fussy about um, their logos and kind of how um, the approval logo or the, the product sort of listed logo should only be displayed on the product itself. Um, you know, that product is listed or recognized or classified and that is where the logo goes. So yeah, with all of these uh, approval bodies, again, they are all, all very fussy in terms of um, how the logo is displayed, um, whether it's printed on a label or on a um, sort of a disc, um, sort of how it's sort of attached to the product, uh, its kind of legibility um, and various parts. So yeah, UL has got various parts of the listed logo, such as the, um, the code for, for you as a manufacturer, um, the kind of particular class of, of product that it goes into. Um, so again, all of that, all of that's a kind of um, work through uh, by UL. So yeah, we have listed, recognized and classified. So, so listed uh, is, is a product. So you know, our, our zone check is, is a listed um, UL product. So again, similar to what I've mentioned before in terms of the approval process, they do testing, they make checks, um, they want to make sure that it's built exactly the way that we, we said it was built um, when we first got it approved. Uh, recognized is due with components. So um, I, I've often, often seen this for electrical components. So you might have you know, resistors, uh, terminal blocks, um, thyristors, variable resistors, you know, whatever. And they, they would also have this kind of R symbol, um, which is, stands for recognized. So that means that the kind of UL, in a, in a way, has approved the component, 
but it doesn't approve the product that it's going into. So, um, so you may have uh, panels and systems that have got um, UL recognized components within them, but it doesn't mean that the product is approved or, or listed because UL haven't inspected that the product as a whole. Uh, then we have classified. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what classified is, but I think it is down to testing a particular performance of a product. So an example might be these, um, these uh, sort of cladding materials. They would do a particular fire test on that cladding, and then that, that material or, or that panel would then be classified as, yet yeah, it's passed this specific test. So I guess I suppose they're not approving the product as a whole. They're just saying, yet yeah, this, this thing has passed this particular test, and that would be a classified. But I'd say I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, VDS. Um, so I won't uh, kind of murder the, the German uh, title there, but you can see uh, VDS is, is um, a shortened version of that, uh, that German um, expression there. Um, and that means uh, trusted, it, trust in security, yeah, it, it, it means in, in English. So that, that's where VDS gets its name from. Um, VDS is, is very similar to, um, well, it, it's got similarities with the LPCB in the UK. Um, but it, it is, again, it's got... Um, uh, insurance kind of side to it as well. Um, again, it's uh, an independent organization, um, it's, um, say a, a, a fully owned subsidiary of the German Insurance Association. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's kind of got its background in, um, in insurance. Again, covers a whole um, wide range of, of different products and different, um, different stages of, of, of construction. Fire sprinklers is just part of, of that. Uh, based in Cologne in, in Germany, um, I did actually manage to get to go and, and go and see them. So um, yeah, when, when our, our latest zone check with uh, the new pump uh, was being approved, I went over to, to VDS and saw their, their testing facilities, which you can imagine, um, yeah, being German, very good uh, facilities. Um, so yeah, they, were, they had you know, automatic meters, uh, they, they could fill the pipes, raise the pressure, um, check, check flows, all automatically going back to a computer screen, and then they can drop the pressure, drain the water, and say all, all very slick uh, operation. Um, so VDS, similar to the LPCB, we have uh, CEA 14, 4001, which, which is a, um, a sprinkler code is an installation um, code for sprinklers. Obviously, in, in, uh, in European countries, they do also have access to uh, BSEN 12845, but CEA 4001 is, is a, an alternative uh, standard. And then the VDS also um, have their kind of version of it, which is a bit like our LPC, B, um, LPC rules, where we have the, the standard and then plus a load of extra bits and that's, that's uh, VDS CEA 4001. Um, obviously, I've, I've got the English version, EN. Um, so, so that is, say, a bit like the LPC rules, where it is a, a, a set standard plus other bits uh, that VDS have, have kind of put over the top. Um, so the, the, the latest CEA 4001 uh, was November 2017 but the latest VDS, it was updated in January this year, 2021. Um, in the UK, we also have Warrington Fire. Um, so yeah, Warrington Fire um, have sort of, uh, I think they, you know, again, I don't know the full details, but they're now part of uh, Element, and Element is, is part of Exova, I think. So again, a little bit confusing, but um, yeah, they're, they're, they were you know, a fully um, kind of independent company that, that grew up in, in Warrington, and say now that they're part of a kind of a bigger organization. Um, but again, they do a whole variety of different things. Um, and again, the, the, the fire um, sprinkler bit is, is, a, is a part of that. So they do testing, they do inspection, certification, and training. 
Um, so yeah, the, the training side of things um, that they have a, um, a, a residential and domestic um, course. They also have uh, FIRAS, which is their installer certification scheme. So for um, residential and domestic, and also uh, industrial and commercial, um, instead of having um, the LPS 1048 scheme as an installer, you can be accredited under the FIRAS scheme and you can also install under that scheme. Um, I, some companies, I guess, have got both. They've also got uh, FRADS, which is the uh, FRAX, I suppose. That's a fire risk assessor certification scheme. And then certifier um, is a, it's a product certification scheme. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure. On the website, it, it seems to suggest it was for passive fire protection only. Um, so, yeah, I don't know whether they do product um, certification for uh, sprinkler components or not. Um, I know that um, Warrington Fire did come in uh, to Project Fire uh, to have a look at our residential zone checks, and they did do some, uh, some testing work, and we did get to sort of display uh, their logo. But um, that was a few years ago now. I'm not quite sure where that kind of now fits on, on, their, on their scheme. Uh, IFC, uh, International Fire Consultants. Um, so again, a bit similar to um, to Warrington Fire in the fact that yet yeah, they're, they're based in uh, Princess Riseborough in the UK. Again, got to go over there a few years ago and, and see their offices. Uh, they're now part of, of the um, not quite sure you pronounce that Kiwa Kiwa Group. Uh, so again, they're they're now part of a, of a bigger uh, organisation. Um, so as, as the name suggests, you know, that they, they started out as, as consultants, um, but now they offer a, a whole variety of different, um, different services. Um, yeah, I put a note there, not to be confused with International Fire Code. So there is also an International Fire Code, which is also IFC. Um, so yeah, don't, don't get the two confused. Um, also, um, I think I'm right in saying that um, BIM as well, isn't it? BIM is, is also uses uh, IFC uh, files. So, yeah, IFC in this case, we're talking about international fire consultants. So, yeah, they provide uh, fire safety engineering, uh, product evaluation. They also have their, uh, their own installer uh, certification scheme. Um, and then again, they perform training. And they also uh, provide expert witness uh, services as well where they're required. Um, so yeah, there's an example there of the um, training courses uh, that they provide. So yeah, that is it for today. Um, so as I said at the start, say I hope that yeah, that information was as was accurate as, as possible. Um, so I just would recommend that um, yeah, if, if you've got any questions uh, regarding that, you know, I'll put all the websites uh, in that presentation. You can contact the, the companies uh, directly um, and yeah, ask them exactly what, what services and uh, say what they do and they don't provide. Um, but yeah, just giving you a flavour of some of the other um, approval bodies and approval schemes that are available um, out there. Um, yeah, thank you to, to Richard. Um, Richard um, provided me with some, some of the uh, Australian um, side of things and how they do it over there. Uh, next week is uh, Your Questions Answered Part 2. So again, uh, I don't know how well long that was now, but uh, yeah, several weeks ago we did, um, we did a similar thing. Um, and I did get some questions through. And so I do have some questions kind of left over uh, from Part 1 to go through. Um, but yeah, if you do have uh, questions you want me to answer, um, you know, in, in fire, sprinklers, etc. then do email them to me, uh, sprinklertalk at projectfire.co.uk, and, uh, and I can answer them next week. And say, look out uh, on LinkedIn, social media. We'll also be posting um, other opportunities for you to, to ask questions to be answered next week in part two. So, yeah, hope you can join me again uh, next week for part two. Um, we, we're kind of coming, coming to an end uh, on the, the sprinkler talks. Not quite sure how many more there's going to be. Um, but, you know, we are looking at uh, other ways of um, kind of reaching out to 
um, to customers, to consultants, to fire engineers, you know, to anyone that's interested really in, in education. Uh, so we'll be looking at some other, other avenues that we can explore uh, in terms of, um, yeah, getting getting um, information out there to people that are interested. So yeah, do uh, do keep in touch. All right, thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.